So we then joined distribution of discrete random variables. Now we're going to do joint distribution of continuous random variables. So if we kind of know how we did marginal distributions, conditional distributions for discrete random variables, the knowledge just extends to continuous. The only difference being instead of using sums, we're going to use integrals um, because that's what we do with the continuous random variables. The joint distribution of two random variables x and y is f of x comma y. And typically, the way we write it, formal way is f of x comma y and x comma y, just to indicate that this is a joint distribution of two random variables, x and y, with values evaluated at lowercase x and lowercase y. If we have a joint distribution, we can easily find the marginal distribution. How did we find the marginal distribution with the discrete case? What did we do with the table? Did we divide? No. But you are right in terms of thinking. You know, this and that. So, what is this and what is that? It's the, the, I mean, it's the, oh, it's the sums of the problems. It is the sums. So, if I had a y variable, I simply summed over all x's. X variable, I summed over all y's. So, if I want to find the marginal distribution of x, I can simply take the joint distribution and integrate it over the support for one. In a similar manner, if I want to find the marginal distribution of y, I will simply integrate it over, integrate the joint distribution over the support of x. Naturally, since this is a function of two random variables, when I integrate it with respect to y, the remaining variable would simply be um, x. So that would become a function of x. Likewise, if I integrate it with respect to x, whatever that's left behind would be a function of y. Good. Is the chat in the way? Yeah. yeah. You should say something. Well, I mean, you didn't really have problems with the last slide. Yeah. It did cross my mind, but I wasn't sure if it was this class or a different class. Um, I should have asked too. So we had we have joint distribution, we have marginal distribution. Absolutely. What is the next one? We have the joint, we have the marginal. The conditional, the conditional distribution. Yeah. 
to the conditional distribution of x given y would simply be f of x times y, excuse me, f of x, y divided by the marginal of y. Likewise, the conditional distribution of y given x would simply be f of x comma y joint divided by the marginal of x. Here is a question. We know that marginal distribution here is a function of x. That is a function of y. What about that? Is it a function of x or is it a function of y? It is a function of x. But what happened to that y? Why did the y get divided out? Why indeed? It's constant because it's given it as it's a constant, it is a single fixed value. So if it's a fixed value, and not only that, when you integrate it in a way, it will get cancelled out, and you would end up having x in the expression. So even though this is one single fixed value, um, we can still vary the value of y here and get a conditional distribution there. So we will end up getting a function of x. And here we'll end up getting a function of y. Does that make sense? Because we are setting um, a specific value of y equals some number. Good. It'll become a constant. X squared. That's my cursive X. So, what makes a function a valid PDF? Sum to one, integrates of one. So, if it's a discrete PDF, it has to sum to one. If it is a continuous PDF, it has to integrate to one. Here it is uh, a joint distribution. I have a function in two variables and it has to integrate to one, how would we integrate? Put to count three, how would we integrate? It's a double integral. So we have to integrate the joint distribution.
with respect to x and y, so that we get one. Then it would be a valid PDF, joint PDF in this case. We have to integrate it over the entire support. If we have to integrate it with respect to, say, um, x and y, but or u and t, but a restricted upper limit, then we're finding the CDF. I'll save that uh, for later. So here, I want to integrate it over the entire support and make sure that it integrates to one. Support here is zero to one, zero to one. If you then take calculus three, multivariate or calculus, it doesn't matter, it's not that big of a deal. Um, C times x squared y times one minus x dx d1 equals one. So people who did take calculus three, what should we do? Uh, I would go to the y first, honestly, just integrate the y. Yeah, it's kind of just a quick, it's just the y square, which is called the y out. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, a few things if you don't remember stuff from um, multi variable calculus, the dx dy would indicate the order in which you're going to integrate. So, this simply means we integrate x first, integrate with respect to x first, then we integrate with respect to y. When we integrate with respect to x, we treat y as constant. When we integrate with respect to y, we treat x as constant. Um, in this case, making one special, mm -hmm. and, and it, no, and it's okay, so got it right. Um, he wants to be special and say, okay, let's just integrate y out. He is right because it's easier to integrate just y, right? So I completely agree with that. But the issue is, could I simply switch this around? As long as the bounds are not mixed. What do you mean by mixed? Like for dy, there's no x of the bound. Exactly. In other words, there is not a, uh, a dependency between x and y. Yeah. Um, they have supports that are separate, so the change in order doesn't matter. So I can switch the order of integration. But if one limit ends up being dependent on, excuse me, one variable ends up being dependent on another variable, then we have a problem. Good. We can't just change the order of integration. So I'm just going to move the x terms and the constant out. So all I did here is I am going to integrate with respect to y first and then integrate with respect to x. So if I integrate with respect to y over its support, we will get y squared over two, evaluated from y equals zero to y equals one, dx, and then that's what it will what? The lower limit doesn't matter because it's just zero. Upper limit, one over two, dx equals one. I can bring that c over two out of the integral.
we will have x squared times one minus x dx. Distributes, I'll end up having x squared minus x cubed. Integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. Integral of x cubed is x raised 4 over 4. Evaluated between 0 and 1. Lower limit doesn't matter. Plug in the upper limit, one cubed over three, one over three, one raised four over four, one over four equals one. Yes? Combine those two, what will we get? One over three minus one over four, one twelve, one over twelve. So what is the value of the constant? So in order for us to have a joint PDF, the constant has to be 24. That is our final joint PDF. And zero less than x less than one, zero less than y less than one. I want to find the CDF before we get to the marginals. So we did. We went over the properties or types of distributions derived from a joint distribution, but I said nothing about a CDF. CDF is a cumulative distribution function. Here, it has, it has to depend on how many variables? Two. If I write F, uppercase F, CDF. F of X, Y, of, you know, X comma Y. Um, what would that mean? What does a regular CDF mean when I write f of x, uppercase f sub x of x? What would that equal to? Some building that x is less than or equal to some number. Right, in this case, x, right? If you recall, for a single random variable, fx of x is simply probability x less than or equal to x. Does it matter if I have that less than or equal to? Could I simply write it as x less than x? For a continuous random variable? Yes. yes. Or discrete? No. Um, so, if you extend this idea to that, what would that equal to? What do we call that? Joint probability. Going to write it as the joint cumulative probability, but it sort of is implied for a continuous distribution. 
you know, we can't have an exact problem. So we have x less than or equal to x and y less than or equal to y. Let us see if you did the homework. How do we find uppercase f? Since we have the lowercase f, what should we do? Integrate it to get uppercase f. How will we integrate? From the lower bound up to x and from the lower bound up to y. Is it the only person? At least Cassie's being finest. What? Oh, so f of x comma y is integral of zero to x, integral of zero to y. Once again, the order here doesn't matter. So 24 x squared y times one minus x. Oops, my bad. Use the dominant variable. Going to use u and v. I am going to use the dummy variable u for um, x and v for y. So here, the way I'm going to define the limit zero less than u up to x, zero less than v up to y. Going to run out of space. So f x comma y of x comma y. I am going to pull out 20 whole u squared times 1 minus u, integrate it with respect to v, just like what I did previously. What is, well, I'm going to let you integrate. Um, integrate and tell me what you get. Cal three. So integral of that would be p squared over two, zero to y, D. So twenty ball integral zero to x u squared times one minus u. Upper limit. V squared, you'd have Y squared divided by two. Do you? can cancel that to get 12. I can pull Y squared out. U squared minus U cubed. Do you? Integrate. u cubed divided by 3 minus u raised 4 divided by 4, evaluated between 0 and x. Which will get us 12y squared x cubed over 3 minus x raised 4 over 4.
Um, we'll end up having 12, sorry, 4u cubed minus 3, 4x cubed minus 3, x raised 4 divided by 12. The 12s would get cancelled. So y squared times 4x cubed minus 3, x raised 4. And what is the support? If we have a closed form expression for the CDF, finding cumulative probabilities will be easy. In the homework, you have problems where you want to find the median. So if you want to find the median for a particular distribution, all you have to do is find the CDF, evaluate it for some m, set it equal to one half. We did a bunch of problems like that in the past. So if you want to find cumulative probabilities, then you have two variables. You can simply use the CDF. Does that make sense? Going to use this example. Um, but can I 